Okay, so now we move on to updating a user. Let's go ahead and define the root out. We'll start to build the controller uh, method. This one is a little bit more tricky, but to be honest, again, we're just kind of playing around here. And if you were using something other than PDO, this would be a little bit easier. However, you may learn something. So uh, the key thing here then is to work out whether we're gonna be using a put or a patch request. Now, generally a put request, as I mentioned earlier, kind of overwrites the resource. So it will overwrite everything. And generally a patch request is used for just small portions. Now it really doesn't matter what you use. It, it completely depends on what you feel comfortable with. And what you can also do is you can map different HTTP verbs to your controllers. So for example, we could say, well, we're going to accept a put and a patch request uh, for this URL. Now the URL is obviously an ID because we're updating a specific user. And then all we need to do is just take the uh, method as normal on that controller. And this method is going to be update. So if you wanted to, you could literally just use put and obviously get rid of this array just here, or you could just use patch. But I think for the purpose of this, we'll go ahead and map put and patch to this URI and this controller method. So let's just head over and we will take a look at what we can do with this new update method. Once again, call this method whatever you want, as long as you keep consistency throughout all of your RESTful controllers. So into this update method, we wanna take our request, response, and our args as well and we are going to think about how we're gonna update this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is jump over to Postman and duplicate this request down and go ahead and change this over. So let's edit this and we will call this users update. Go ahead and uh, save that. And of course we want to make a put or a patch request to users and then a user ID of our choice. So let's go for patch because I personally prefer this one uh, and let's save that out. Okay, so if we just bring up the database, let's go ahead and update uh, record one and change this over. So I obviously need to send a body through and the way that this is going to work is we're gonna be able to choose maybe just the name, just the email or both the name and the email. Now for the purpose of this, we will keep the name and the email in here just so we know that uh, we're updating multiple columns in our database, uh, but of course, you can go ahead and change this around. So let's change both of these over and get this ready to go. Let's send a request through. And of course we get a 200 okay, but we're not doing anything. So uh, because we're using PDO, this tends to be a little bit trickier. What we need to do is grab all of the parameters sent from the body. We need to construct an SQL update query, which is slightly tricky when you're dealing with an array of data you want to update. And just remember, make sure you include validation if you are working on a project like this. Uh, it's really, really important. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is just grab all of my parameters. So from the request that we get, remember we get these back from uh, the JSON uh, body that we get sent. And let's just do a var dump on these just so we can remind ourselves what these look like. So if we come over to Postman, send this request across, we get an array with name and email. Now, an update statement in SQL looks like this. We say update users or whichever table, and then we say set, and then this is the column, and then we set that to a value, and then we do the same thing over and over again, and this is comma separated. So we can pass multiple in here, uh, whatever we want to do. And then we say where ID equals, and then if we're using uh, PDO's prepare statement or method, we use a placeholder. And we also need to use placeholders for all of these values as well. So really the thing here is how do we transform this into something like this? Pretty tricky. Now, of course, what you can do is make this a lot easier and you could just only pass the things in that you're allowed to update. And I think to be honest, that's the best way to do this because like we did with uh, actually storing a user, we explicitly passed in what we're storing so nothing else can be passed in. But if you want this to be flexible into the future, you might want to do what I'm about to do. We can do either way uh, and we maybe switch that out at the end just so uh, you know the kind of best practice. So the first thing I wanna do is just create an SQL params variable. And what this is gonna do is it's going to use array map, which will map over an array with a callback. So if we just go ahead and define out our callback here, like so, then we take in the array. Now the array that we want to take in are the key names of what we have in here, name and email. 
Because remember, when we bind something using a prepared statement, we don't actually pass the value in. We say name equals name like that. So all we need are the array keys. So in this case, I'm going to say array keys on the parameters that have been sent through. Now what I can do is in here, I can return the kind of syntax that we need to construct this query. So uh, for each loop of this, we are going to receive in that column name or parameter name, whatever you want to call it. And then we're just simply going to return column, which is the column. So in the first iteration, it will be name. Second, it will be email. And then we're going to concatenate on and equals a colon and then immediately without any space, the column name again. So if that doesn't make sense, let's just do a die here and we will output uh, this just before. So do a var dump on SQL params. Now this will be an array, but then what we can do is implode this by a comma. So let's go over and send this request and we should get here name equals and then the name placeholder and email equals the email placeholder. But obviously we can't pass an array into a string for an SQL query. So what we do is we just wrap the entire thing in implode. And you can do this on a new line if you want, but essentially all we're doing is we're taking an array here, the array that's returned by this, and we are converting it into a string separated by a comma and then a space. So now if we do a, we can even do an echo on SQL params or return it, we will see the following. There we go. So name equals name, comma, e email equals email. And this uh, happens to be for anything else we pass in as well. So just type in anything here, send this across and it just works. So this is one way of doing it. And now from this, of course, what we can do is prepare a statement, passing that in, and then we can just execute it, merging in the ID and the original parameters, the values that we want from here. So let's do that. And then I think maybe switch it out afterwards. We'll see how we go. So the statement here is very simple. It's just this C from our container, the database, and we prepare a statement. And into this, we're going to update our users table. We're going to set, and then we're going to pass in our SQL params. Now, the only other problem with this is there's a potential for an SQL injection here, because obviously you are passing directly in data that's provided by your user. So I think actually we will switch this out. You could escape these using the manual uh, escape functions with PDO or methods with PDO. So we'll do this. I'll let you kind of think about it and then we'll go ahead and kind of revert this because it's always important to be as secure as you possibly can. So now once we've passed them parameters in, we're going to say where ID equals ID. And now we can try our execution of this and we can catch a PDO exception as usual. So PDO exception, we'll call that E. And if anything fails, let's just return with a response here with a status code of 400. And then into this, obviously we haven't even done the execution of the statement yet, we would execute this. And if you think about the way that this works, uh, we have a list of any columns. So it could be five, 10, 15. And then we also need to bind in the ID. So we need to merge an array with the ID in with the SQL params from here. So to do this, we just do an array merge on the params that we get into our method here with these parameters. And then we just merge that on with another array with ID like so. Now, if this is tricky and you're having a little bit of trouble understanding this, not a problem. Just do a var dump on that, kill the page there and come over, take a look at it. And you can see that, oh, we've got an undefined variable ID. Of course, it should be args ID like so, because we're getting that back in the uh, URI. And there we go. So now we've got name, Alexander, email, and the ID, which is finally bound into this value here. So let's get rid of that. And let's just fix this up to args ID. And we should be good to go. So what this will do is obviously update any columns we pass in. And then finally, we just want to return a response with JSON and then into this, of course, we want to re-get the user by their ID so we have nice fresh data. So we're gonna say get user by ID and we just pass in the ID that we're updating. So let's just check this out. We know that in the database, user ID one is Alex and Alex at cocourse.com. This should update to Alexander and Alexander at cocourse.com and it looks like it's worked. We can obviously have a little sneak peek in the database and we know that that's done. So like I said, this uh, solution is fine if you are properly escaping everything and you can do this using the PDO escape functions. But to be honest, 
I would personally prefer to just only allow things to be passed in that I know I can update because in this case technically you would have to also check if people weren't updating other columns like the password column uh, things could get a little bit dangerous so this is good for flexibility if you have the appropriate checks around it but in this case we don't so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to update this now so what we're going to do is in here we're going to change around this to only allow in the data that we want to update so very simply we're just going to get rid of our SQL primes that we've built up we know how to do that now so if you did want to use that later then you can but I'm just literally going to say where name equals name comma and email equals email and we're done so now what we can do is uh, manually pass these into this array merge or we can literally just get rid of this and just include an array here so it kind of tidies up our code as well so the name then is from the request and it is get param and we just pass the name in there. And then of course we just do the same for the email and finally the ID. So let's go ahead and grab that and let's grab the ID. And what we've done now is fully protected this as much as we can. So we're not you know, trying to be clever. We're just inserting what we need and that's it. And if you did need to update anything, you can go ahead and add another column if that uh, is something you wanted people to be able to update. So now that we've done this, then uh, let's go ahead and just test this out again. So let's change this back to Alex and Alex at cocourse.com. And we should see uh, it doesn't look like it's worked. Oh, and of course, this just does not exist. So again, let's bind in args ID. That makes complete and utter sense. So let's go ahead and send this request off again. And there we go. That's been updated, of course, in our database as well. So uh, we can now get rid of this because we're not actually using this variable anymore. And that is a much more secure, tidier way of doing it, although we know how to do the original way now. So that is pretty much it for now updating a user. If you needed to add any more columns, you just add them to here, add them to your query. But of course, if you're using something other than PDO, this is going to be a lot easier.